And uh, before we start uh, discussing the upgrade process itself, uh, we'll hand over to JJ for another poll. Yeah, thanks, um, thanks, Christoph. Uh, yeah, and so since we've been looking at um, you know how to conduct uh, testing in the case of uh, an upgrade, we just want to ask all of you uh, how you yourself currently proceed uh, when you're planning uh, upgrades and uh, testing uh, for them. So whether maybe you build your own test environment from scratch, or you might be uh, using an existing development or stage environment to do the testing. Uh, maybe you use some of the external tools that um, that were discussed um, by Christoph. And maybe you don't uh, you don't really do um, any testing at all uh, for upgrades, you know, which which could be the case. Um, we had um, the same session earlier today for um, uh, for for our European um, uh, contacts, and uh, a few people there didn't do any testing either. So it'd be interesting to see how uh, how you do this currently and how you conduct your upgrade testing. I'll just give this a few more seconds so everyone can participate. And just to remind you also that um, you can ask uh, questions at any point by using the question section of your control panel. And we'll answer um, those questions towards the end of the webinar. Uh, but for now, thanks for participating in this poll. I'm just going to close this and share the results. So this is not unlike um, what we saw earlier today. So um, you know, most people seem to have um, their own uh, staging or development environment, which is um, which is a good practice to have, of course. And also building your own test environment from scratch uh, works well. Uh, and then you know um, some of you are using external tools, and uh, there's a few of you who don't do any testing at all. So that's also interesting. And maybe um, you're looking at uh, doing some upgrading. Um, in the near future, and so hopefully you'll get some good um, some good insight today on on how to do that. Any um, any thoughts on this, Christoph? Before you continue, um, yeah, I mean, you know, using the dev stage environment for testing, I would say, is the way to go, definitely, because it gives you uh, the most detailed tests that you can actually have. Um, I would strongly recommend for those who who do not think the testing is really necessary, uh, I would really definitely recommend them to actually implement some kind of a testing for, for the upgrades because the issues are there um, and the issues are impacting um, you know, the, 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 this change. So, yeah, I mean, maybe you, you were lucky so far, but you may run out of luck. Therefore, it, um, unless you are willing to accept some kind of downtime related to, to, to those bugs, I would strongly recommend to, to prepare yourself for this process. Great. Uh, thanks, Christoph. And uh, I'll hand back over to you now. OK, JJ. Um, so yeah, the upgrade process itself. Um, as I said, I'm, we're talking here about 5.6 to 5.7 uh, upgrade process. Now, if we, if you are planning to uh, to upgrade from 5.5, then you will have to uh, upgrade to 5.6 first, and using dump and reload, and then uh, you can uh, you can follow the process that, uh, that we have here. So this is this is really important to keep in mind. And the process itself is, I would say, pretty simple. So you, you just pick one of the slaves um, and, and, and start here. So you disable uh, in the DB fast shutdown. You shut down the MySQL. You run the binary upgrade to install the MySQL 5.7 binaries using QM, apt, whatever, any method you, you may want. Um, then you start the MySQL on 5.7 run my school upgrade to make sure that uh, all the schema tables so, so on and so forth were their format was uh, updated to, to the 5.7 um, then you want to restart my school because otherwise some of the features are not really working correctly like reputation um, and then after the restart you should be all set Replic you, you, you need to you want to check the replication whether it's your slave is replicating from the master or not but in my, from me, from my experience, it when you follow this process, it always worked correctly. So the replication was always working. 
Of course, if not, you, you need to you need to fix it. Um, before you perform the upgrade, uh, obviously we want to take the node out of the rotation in a proxy layer or in your application, depending on how you route your traffic and where you do this. Obviously, we don't want to. Uh, I mean, we don't want any queries uh, hitting our um, our host while we're trying to perform an upgrade. Um, after the upgrade, uh, as long as it is possible, we want to put some limited traffic on the host. So this is because you have to. This MySQL after restart it has to uh, it has to warm up. Therefore it will not operate as efficiently as the rest of your infrastructure. So you don't want to overload it with traffic because that's, this will impact your application. And also it allows, you know, this, using this limited, limited traffic allows you to see how it behaves under the, re, the real world traffic. So you watch the CPU utilization, I.O., uh, you know, uh, memory uh, utilization, network throughput. Um, it gives you time to, to observe and to monitor this host for a while. And as soon as you're open, as you see that everything seems to be okay, you can you know gradually increase the load uh, step by step to a normal level. Of course, monitoring in the process uh, in the meantime to make sure that everything is running correctly. And if everything is okay, if host is warm, and if it's accepting the traffic and is handling the traffic, uh, then you can proceed with the upgrade on uh, remaining uh, slaves in your topology. So um, once all, all of the slaves are upgraded, you have to pick one of them to become a new master. Uh, what you may want to do is to set up a master-master replication with current 5.6 master. Uh, this is not required, but it might be useful. Mm, and then you have to perform a switchover to the new master. So uh, once you do this, just check this old master, the, the remaining 5.6 node in your uh, topology. If it keeps up replicating, that's fine. You just stop it and perform a regular, up, regular upgrade process like you did with the slaves. Um, if the uh, if the replication breaks, um, and it may happen because uh, while old to new uh, replication is um, possible, is supported, new version to old version replication is not. Which so basically it may or may not work, depend on your workload, depending on your um, binary log format settings. Uh, so. So it may it may break the replication, but in that case it's not a big deal. Um, you just need to wipe out the data um, from this uh, from this last 5.6 node, run the binary upgrade. I mean to to to, to install MySQL 5.7 on it using QM apt whatever, and then you have basically an, an empty My, MySQL 5.7 host. So you just need to provision it uh, using well the extra backup or whatever just like you would provision any, any new slave and then set up the replication. And basically that's that's about it. You are you are done with the process. And while you are done with the process, uh, we still would like to say a couple of words about different tools uh, which you may find uh, useful uh, during this whole, uh, whole process. As I said, we, I mean, I mentioned couple of them earlier, some some not, but still I thought it would be nice to put it together uh, as a list. So TCP dump, well, as I said, this is a tool which can be used in a nice, a very nice way to actually collect your traffic, collect your network traffic to, uh, to your database and in a way collect your queries. Um, which is what is nice that it, you can run it in multiple locations. So you can run it on the proxy, or if if it will be impact if it will impact your performance too much, you can run it on the application host. 
Um, what is important to keep in mind that, again, we want to test all the things, right? So if we, if you have uh, maybe uh, different hosts, I mean different roles of uh, of your web hosts, like some of them are handling one type of traffic, some of them are handling different type of traffic. Uh, of course, you want to collect all those samples to to have, you know, to 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 cover every different type of query that you may have in your uh, in your application. Uh, Percona Toolkit, so PT Upgrade uh, and Percona Playback are tools from Percona. Um, the PT Upgrade, as I said, is designed to, to check the performance regression and, uh, and some basic result sets, uh, regressions. Um, so what it just does is just compares those, uh, runs the queries against two different hosts and, uh, and report on the differences. Um, so as I said, it's a very useful tool to do some preliminary checking. Uh, very useful because this is something a DBA can do without uh, having developers involved. So because this is usually, uh, you know, requires coordination, more time, so on and so forth. Developers are always busy. And while a DBA can run this kind of process, run the, collect the queries and run the PT upgrade on his own, and he can pinpoint some of the issues which would, you know, which would eventually be picked up later, but you can, you can catch up them, you know, uh, before you actually perform some of the additional tests. Um, what kind of playback is another tool, uh, on the other hand, which is designed for load testing, for stressing your, um, your database using uh, the slow log. Uh, and what is nice with it, it tries to simulate, I mean, it, you, you can use it to simulate a real world uh, type of workload. So it's not like you, you, you don't have to just run, push everything you can as fast as you can. You can do some tweaking to make sure it is more or less kind of similar to, to what you see on your particular uh, environment. 